Okay, so we're continuing on with electrophilic additions uh, in this uh, section of the ACS study guide. And so I wanted to take a look at question number one with you here. And so this is a question that would be um, a chapter A question, right? You can see it involves an alkene, and then we're treating it with aqueous acid, right? If you have H2O and H+, plus, this is the same thing as writing H3O+. Plus. And so if I had a reaction like this, am I going to get, can anybody tell me here, am I going to get Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition of water here? And it's not a trick question. Would I get Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition? Just taking an alkene that's unsymmetrical and treating it with H3O+. Plus. Exactly. No, this is going to give me Markovnikov, right? Anti-Markovnikov, that would be hydroboration oxidation. So I'm going to end up with kind of a weird curved arrow there, but anyhow, you get the idea. So that's going to give me this carbocation. It's not going to rearrange. Then water is going to come in as a nucleophile and attack, and it is going to give me B. So after nucleophilic attack and proton transfer, I'm going to end up with this alcohol here. Okay, number two. So something that I told you um, that we went over in detail, when we talked about hydroboration oxidation, which is this here, I said that sometimes we write BH3THF, and I said that sometimes in an ACS study guide or MCAT materials, they'll write B2H6. It means the exact same thing. So if I use B2H6 followed by hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide, is this going to be Markovnikov addition of water or anti-Markovnikov addition of water? Could anybody answer that? Will this be Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? If I do hydroboration oxidation. Exactly. So this is going to be anti-Markovnikov. Now. Is this going to be a syn addition of the proton in the hydroxyl or an anti-addition of the proton and hydroxyl? This is important because they're asking two questions. It's going to be syn addition, right, Jenny? Exactly. So now, if I look at the possible answers, okay, this one is anti-mark. This one is anti-mark. This one is just plain wrong because it's a diol. And this one is Markovnikov. Maybe I should use capital M for... Markovnikov, but anyhow, this one's Markovnikov, so that one is way off. Now, so even if you knew it was anti-Markovnikov, it's not enough because you have to discern between A and B. So which one is going to be correct? Well, remember, the hydroxyl and the proton have to be added in a syn fashion. So here you see the hydroxyl and the proton are on the same side. Here you see the hydroxyl and the proton are on opposite sides. And so the answer is going to be A is the only correct one. So again, you have to know anti-Markovnikov and syn addition because you see how they test you on both of them here. Okay, cool. Number three, what is the best method to carry out the transformation shown here? So if we take a look at this double bond, we're adding the hydroxyl to the carbon that has less protons. And so this is a Markovnikov addition of, of water across a double bond. So we can do that with water and acid, right? Remember, these two together make H3O+. Plus. Um, this one here, HBr in a peroxide, well, that's got nothing to do with it. Um, this one is anti-mark, hydroboration oxidation, so anti-mark. So this is not correct. Well, hold the phone because oxymercuration, demercuration is also Markovnikov, but we avoid, avoid a rearrangement. So we have to ask ourselves, is there going to be a rearrangement here, okay? So if I write down the bond line structure of the compound, which is this, uh, this is the compound, okay? And we've seen this compound many times. If I just use Markovnikov conditions, I'm going to end up with this carbocation. Let me ask you, this carbocation, is it going to undergo a rearrangement? Would it? Yes or no? And it's not designed to fool you or anything? Would this carbocation undergo a rearrangement? I'm 
Exactly. Thanks, Jenny. Absolutely, right? This is totally going to undergo a rearrangement, okay? It's going to undergo a rearrangement to give us this carbocation. And so we would have to, then we can cross this one off because we need to avoid the carbocation rearrangement. And so if we just want to get a straight Markov Nikov addition, we have to use oxymercuration, demercuration. Cool. All right, let's try number four. The ACS study guide loves rearrangements, as you can see here. Predict the product of the reaction shown here. So if I do a, so remember, this is just an alkene. It's unsymmetrical. I'm doing an addition of HCl. So that's going to proceed with Markovnikov regioselectivity. So that means I'm going to end up with this. So if I put in my ethyl groups, I'm going to end up with this carbocation. The carbocation that I've drawn here in black, is that going to undergo a rearrangement? Could anybody answer that? And it's not a trick question or something to fool you or tease you. Absolutely, this is going to undergo a rearrangement, isn't it, right? Because this proton, I'll put it in black, this proton is going to migrate or go over here so that we end up with a tertiary carbocation. Now that we've got that, what's going to happen is the chlorine is going to come in as a nucleophile and it's going to give us A. So the chloride is going to come in as a nucleophile and we end up with A. So that is going to be the major product. Why? Because we do have a carbocation rearrangement occurring here. Um, let's try number seven. Fast question. Lightning round. Okay. Let's see how quickly we can answer this one. I'm serious. What is the best condition to do this reaction? Take this alkene and convert it into this primary alcohol. Anybody? A, B, C, or D? Thanks, Isaac. Absolutely. Hydroboration oxidation. Remember, again, B2H6 is the same thing as boring DHF. So this is just anti anti Markovnikov addition of water across a double bond. Good. Uh, let's see here. Number eight is kind of a tricky, not tricky, but a, a question you have to think about. Okay, so we've already discussed if you have an alkene and you treat it with bromine, you get anti addition, right? So anti addition. Okay, so if I do anti addition, what I'm going to end up with is one bromine is going to be up and one bromine is going to be down, right? They're going to be anti to each other. And so if I have one bromine coming up off of this, you, if you imagine this, and then one bromine coming down like this, that means that one of the ethyl groups is going to be in the back of the screen and the other one is going to be coming out towards you like this. And so what kind of compound is this? Is this a meso compound? And the answer is, yeah, this is a meso compound because if you rotate this bond 180 degrees, okay, and there's not a lot of room on here, so I'm going to move this up a little bit. But if you move, rotate this 180 degrees, then you end up with something that looks like this. So you have this bond coming down and then you have this bond coming out. And then you have the two bromines like this. So this actually is a meso compound, but that involves some <clears throat> rotation of the bond there. So I would definitely use my scratch paper to solve a problem like this, okay? Unless you're really astute, you can say, well, this is a, a trans compound, this is anti-addition. So yeah, I am gonna get a meso compound. If you're really sharp, yeah, that'll work, but I would always uh, double check it. All right, let me show you another one that's important, um, which is anti-Markovnikov addition of water across a triple bond. So you see this guy here? Remember we talked about R2BH, right? Which was the same thing as 9BBN, right? So remember, an R group is just an R group. So if you see something like this, it says cyclohexane, times 2 BH, it's the same thing as R2BH, right? And cyclohexane is just an R group. 
So this is anti-Markovnikov addition of water across that triple bond. And remember, C6H5 is the same thing as a phenyl. So you'd end up with phenyl, double bond, anti-Markovnikov addition, right? But this enol is going to undergo tautomerization to give you, oops, to give you this aldehyde. So you end up with the aldehyde in the end. So you can see the compound is this one right here is C. Uh, what else? So we covered that. So there's just three more I wanted to do with you. Okay. So this one here, remember when you make a methyl ketone, so this is a methyl ketone. And if you make that from sulfuric acid, water and mercury to sulfate. Okay. So that's the key. That means you started out with an alkyne. And so the answer has to be this one because it's the alkyne. This is covered in chapter nine, as was this one. This was covered in chapter nine as well. And there's two more questions I wanted to go over with you, um, which is question number 16. So we didn't cover Diels Alder chemistry, but we did cover 16. Can I ask you guys this one? This is being, do this as a lightning round again. If I want to take an alkene and make this functional group, does anybody remember how you would do that? We did see it a bunch of times. Yeah, um, it's not going to be permanganate. That would give you a cis diol. So B and B, I'll put B, would actually give you this compound. So you'd end up with the cis diol like that. It's the same thing as using osmium tetroxide. So do you remember MCPBA? MCPBA? MCP? B? A. There we go. So that means it's a peroxy acid. So this is the same thing as MCPBA. Keep doing that. MCPBA. A peroxy acid makes an epoxide, right? And then you can treat that with H3O plus after and then you end up with a trans diol. So you end up with one hydroxyl going down, one hydroxyl going up, and of course you would end up with the enantiomer as well. Does that help jog your memory a little bit? MCPBA is a peroxy acid, right? Which is R, right? You have this, this, and then this, okay? Peroxy acid makes it. And this functional group here, this is called and epoxide, epoxide. And we'll look at epoxides in even more detail in organic chemistry too. They're covered in depth in chapter 13. We'll talk all about them. Okay, one more question. And that is question number 19. Question number 19. So halohydrin formation. So halohydrins. Okay, so if I take my double bond Okay, which is unsymmetrical, and I treat it with bromine and water. I'm going to add a bromine and a hydroxyl. Is the bromine, or sorry, is the hydroxyl going to go on the carbon in red or the carbon in blue? Could anybody answer that? The hydroxyl. OH, will it go on the carbon in red or the carbon in blue? So this, it's going to go on the carbon in red, right, Jenny? Okay, good. So the hydroxyl is going to, oops. The hydroxyl is going to go on the carbon in red. The bromine is going to go on the carbon in blue. Cool. Now, Jenny, second part. Is this syn addition or anti addition? And it's not a trick. Anti addition. Exactly. So, anti addition. So, if we look at these, as far as regio selectivity goes, A looks good, B looks good, um, C is wrong, and D is wrong. In terms of regio selectivity, right, they have the hydroxyl in the wrong spot. Okay, now if we look at um, A and B, so again, this is my red carbon and this one here, okay? This is my blue carbon is this one here. Now, if I look at both of these, you can see that in A, the hydroxyl and the bromine are on the same side of the molecule, whereas in B, they're on opposite faces of the molecule. And so B must be the correct answer. There you go, so a little bit of halohydrin chemistry.
Okay.